Hi, I'm Nicole DeMarco. I'm the U.S. editor of ID, and we're here at Copenhagen Fashion Week as part of the Autumn Winter 2023 talks. Um, and today we'll be discussing the importance of effectively incubating emerging talent. I'm here with Nora, Olya, and Electra. Um, and why don't you guys give us a little introduction about yourselves, what um, sort of work you do, and what brought you to fashion in the first place? Sure, do you want me to start? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nora, I'm head of communications at Renew Cell. So we're a textile recycling company uh, producing a material called Circulos. And essentially what Circulos is, it's that it's a 100% recycled uh, material that you use to produce new fabrics and then new designs from. So we work together with brands and designers all over the world to incorporate Circulos um, within their collections and within their garments so that mm -hmm. consumers can consume um, textiles and garments made from recycled uh, clothing. Amazing. Uh, I'm Olya, founder of One Granary, uh, which is a global support platform for emerging designers. Mm -hmm. We start working with them very early when they're still in school and then support them in either going into the industry, getting the jobs or starting their own brands and we support them throughout that journey. Um, I'm Electra and uh, I have a newly start founded brand called Electra Rothschild slash Masculina. So I make clothes. Amazing. Yeah, yeah excited to have you all here. Um, so to just sort of kick it off, I mean, what really is the importance of supporting emerging talents within the industry, within the current fashion landscape? I mean, I think we're at a point now where uh, fashion is really changing and there's a lot of things happening within that. Uh, but fashion has always been about pushing society forward in different forms. And, and for us, especially as a material company, we see a lot of interest and a lot of kind of focus on materials and, and a reborn interest in craftsmanship and mm -hmm. where our clothes come from and how we kind of produce them and so on. I think this emerging talent is going to be a huge role in how we kind of push the industry towards this. Um, so, yeah, I think that, I mean, emerging design has always been part of that and changing the industry, but I think more than ever, we really need that now. I mean, I have probably uh, 50 reasons why they need to be supported. Um, my journey changed from purely romantic, being obsessed with fashion and those designers being my friends, my classmates, mm -hmm. right? And helping them to actually now being against any charity and looking at it as business and understanding how important those businesses are for the industry and for all of our careers. You know, either you work in media or you work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in production. If we don't have those healthy companies in five years time, there's no future for the industry, right? Because what we call emerging now is actually the industry. Um, they are an amazing ground to bring innovation, test things. Um, you know, if you build a company from ground up, you can actually implement all of those things we're now talking about mm -hmm. in terms of sustainability when the big companies, they just can't turn around fast mm -hmm. enough. Um, so yeah, it's just like so important for the health of the industry we work in. Um, and we should just be all investing in it. Mm -hmm. I think you had a really good point um, that like, new talent has like the unique position of like being able to implement change quickly mm -hmm. and like to work with sustainability in terms of materials or whatever it really it's like it's quicker and easier for us quote unquote like uh, to implement these changes mm -hmm. than like a huge company that has like so many links um, to go through but then it's E e faster but, but harder because you don't have access to it so then yeah. you need but that's the yeah. double yeah. side yeah. to it because it's like we don't like coming out of school it's like there's no education in supply chains and production in mm -hmm. any of these things because it's like basically a separate education mm -hmm. uh, to be like a product designer um, so like when you're in fashion school you're like there's this culture of like yeah you should want to have your own brand right or label, but uh, but at the same time we're being educated to like work in a company as a designer, kind of. Mm. Um, 
In which makes it hard then to like go in and implement all these changes when it's like we come out into a system where we don't know any links really sure um, i'm sure like it also feels like there's a ton of pressure associated with that as well even just the label mm. as an emerging designer that idea that you're the one putting forth yeah this change when you're just entering into the industry right like kind of like i don't know like blue eye it's like i don't know mm. you know <laughs> it's like we ha i have to figure all this out now in the position i'm in at least you know and i think a lot of other e emerging talents are like in the same position it's but like we're a really interesting mix of people here mm. because in some way we realized while doing one granary that for example you guys really want to work with these guys and you really need them mm. and but then somehow even though all of you are online and can be found never can find each other mm. and then we now trying to really you know grab everyone and connect but then mm. you are media right mm -hmm. you represent such a massive platform you have such responsibility of why are these designers feeling so much pressure? Why are they exposed so fast? Why do they have this like massive camera on them all the time, right? Mm. So all of us in this setup, mm -hmm. you know, need to actually be brought together all the time and speak what things can be changed. Otherwise, everyone is just operating in their own bubble and it just doesn't it's work. It's yeah. exactly that, yeah. Yeah, we need to connect the dots a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you is how can bigger industry leaders, whether companies, even just influential people in this field can um, step in and really help these younger talents like mm -hmm. get out there and, and get what they need? I mean, from our perspective and working within the supply chain, obviously we're trying mm -hmm. to understand how we can work closely with the designers and brands and how to kind of also be a I mean, that supply chain partner that, as you mentioned, you don't really have that when you come out of school or no. when you c maybe you leave a brand to start your own, you're, you don't have that experience. Um, and it's difficult to be a produ production manager and a designer and a, I don't know, f the fine <laughs> CFO uh, of your own brand. Hats, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. So I yeah. think from our end, it's um, um, understanding how we can work with the producers, fabric producers, mm -hmm. uh, um, to make sure that they can work around minimums um, and volumes, timings and so on. Um, so putting up that supply chain is something that we're trying to do as a lot. Mm -hmm. But then also, of course, we see uh, the buyers and um, how they kind of also trying to work with these designers and understanding how they can meet the way that they work and mm -hmm. find a w solution for um, serving them as well. Um, I feel that potentially first we should redefine what that notion of um, who we support is because it's always about designer. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's an interesting fact I learned only last year in London talent visa can be granted only to a fashion designer. Not a single other person within the industry can receive a talent oh, visa. Oh, that's cool. um, yeah. I don't qualify as talented, but then I can endorse other students mm. as talent to receive a visa. Um, so we give money, visas, all the support only to designers. But the designers, even if they receive all, of, you know, when they win the prize, almost everyone we work with has no idea what to do with the money after they got the money. Mm -hmm. So then they need the right people in the team, right? And there's so many different roles within the brand to make the company work. So I think starting from investing not just in one specific person, because it takes a village, mm -hmm. you know, and so you don't need to be the social media manager, you know, all of those roles, no, because like there are other really skilled, talented people that you can bring on board. Right. Um, so maybe it's investing in a system instead. You yeah, know, like not in a, excluding. In a chain where like multiple designers can come into like producing mm -hmm. like yeah fabric um production or like the supply chain like getting access to that i feel would be like a massive help um because it's really like no idea what that is at the at this point you but know? it's good probably to ask why everyone is helping only designers yeah. mm -hmm. and i think it's the lack of long-term vision and every th designers are used as a token mm -hmm. by almost everyone in the industry so it's easier to help designer because there's some exchange on, I don't know, exposure. Or you can stand to a physical person. They mm -hmm. usually look great, right? Mm -hmm. But there's no idea that, okay, it's better we invest long term. There's no return this season or maybe even a few years. But in five years, we will have, inc thank you, Elvimit, you'll have a 
big pool mm -hmm. of designers that can take those creative positions that now we know they're really struggling to fill. So whenever they need to find a new creative director, they're like with a with a hair comb, right? <laughs> <laughs> Literally going through the whole industry. Yeah. So many designers, but no one has the journey to get to a place where they build the muscle to then step. You either go into a brand and usually really pigeonhole to a specific mm. role and then you know you do denim for 10 years, mm. impossible to transition to creative director. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, you start brand and it dies within two years. <laughs> so how it's figuring out like first, can we support long term? And mm -hmm. is there a third, fourth, fifth model of working? You know, maybe it can be studios and labs where designers can create. Maybe it can be project based, maybe real experimenting and, mm -hmm. and thinking wider. Because we as an industry notorious for just like finding a way and then mm -hmm. following it for 20 years and without any change. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost about building like an entirely new infrastructure that mm. supports these people. Experimenting, just mm -hmm. not being scared to fail. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, and if you decide to support, always having a long term vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious on that note, Electra, if there have been specific challenges you've encountered or even like very helpful tools in the past few years, obviously, from your show last season to now. Um, Imagine you pulling out the book like this. <laughs> <laughs> all of the challenges. Oh Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> no challenges. I mean, mm, is being resourceful mm. like yeah like budget mm -hmm. um time management yeah yeah resourcefulness mm -hmm. is like the key in all those challenges all mm -hmm. the time like the hustle mm -hmm. in and out up and down yeah uh, finding a way yeah, to yeah. make it work yeah yeah mm -hmm. um i'm curious what you all think um, the future looks like the future landscape for emerging talents. I mean, I think what you just explained, like that, would be a great scenario, like to to give the um, yeah, like an infrastructure mm -hmm. for for emerging talents to take part of mm -hmm. instead of um, to really be able to develop mm -hmm. something else. It, because I feel like at this point, like what what's happening now is just like the same wheel running and uh, the same outcome is like, what is it? 70% of people in Fashion East also close their company after. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah, I think investing in like another f infrastructure would be a really good, uh, good way to see the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I'm going back to supply chain, but yeah. uh, I think it's also a really important topic right now in materials and production and how to kind of do that for these smaller brands. And I'd love to see how we can find a healthy way to grow these smaller brands, as you say, but not to focus because we've built a system now that it's based on um, large volumes, mm -hmm. constantly large mm -hmm. volumes, and it's almost impossible to be that in between. But if you can find a way to build these healthy companies that can look long term and that can develop without coming to the same scale and uh, constantly increasing their volumes because mm -hmm. then we're kind of back to square one and that's where we don't want to be. Right. So how do we make sure that these um, talents that are starting their own brands can do that in a good way? But then also I think it's so interesting to look at how do we make sure that these the larger established brands can get hold of these talents and within sustainability especially it's important to work from within a brand you know we want mm -hmm. the the companies the bigger ones to track the the um, talents that can make a difference within their brands as well so not just going off and starting your own thing but also being part of that change i think it's really important yeah, I had really interesting chats with some suppliers and they were saying that the reason they support emerging brands because they test and push forward mm, their, yeah. their for production, sure. for sure. and their mm -hmm. team. And they're like, otherwise you just do the same thing on big scale, the team is bored, there's no mm. challenge. And what emerging brands are asking is usually uh, pretty much impossible. No, I mean, that's <laughs> the conversations we have as well. It's like when it's a smaller designer or a smaller brand, they're like, why not? Or can we do this? Can I do this? Where it's where the bigger one is like, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And can you fit into this? Or can mm -hmm. this supplier fit into this? whether the, the new ones are always like, but I want to do this and why not? And why can't I do that? But I can try that and then we'll see what happens and so on. So mm. definitely, I mean, it's a whole other conversation that you have. Mm. And from my side to answer your question, yeah. I think the future is really bright. 
Yes. Um, the industry changed so much in the last five, seven years and keeps changing. It's the best time possible to be an emerging brand. Mm. It's really hard. But, you know, in the past, you couldn't reach anyone. You didn't know where to go. You couldn't build your community. You couldn't reach out to talent or factories. Uh, there were no knowledge, everything. I mean, it's still like f fashion industry, just like all lies and gossip, right? <laughs> so, so no, but it's really hard to, to figure out, like, what's the real mm. story behind the company and, like, if, if it works, if it doesn't, like, no one really shares. Mm. Um, but there's so much movement happening in terms of, you know, uh, all the big companies doing their direct to consumer. So there's more space for young brands mm -hmm. on the shelves of big e-commerce and multi-brand stores. Uh, yeah, you have all the social media that obviously is such a massive boost. It's like this amazing shift that it's like everyone, instead of going really wide, there's all this micro communities and different aesthetics. So then again, you know, brands have a place for, you know, you don't need a billion people to buy you. You can have your mm -hmm. community of 10,000 mm -hmm. or imagine 10,000 people buy a dress from you. It would I mean, really help yeah. you with <laughs> business. Yeah. That would be amazing. So um, <laughs> I think the, m the way the world changes is really amazing um, for brands, but of course, uh, still uh, really painful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a hard journey. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling all designers that they are athletes and they should approach mm. this as Olympics <laughs> and exercise every Marathon. day and just know that <laughs> a lot of them won't make it or won't <laughs> stay there for long. And but this is the only way you can approach it. Yeah, I mean, daily grind. <laughs> it is the grind for sure. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, on that note, are there any other words of wisdom or advice that you might give to emerging talents, people who are? Just getting started in the industry, maybe students, anyone who might be watching. We have a long list. <laughs> can I can I say one more thing yes. about production? <laughs> oh please, please. <laughs> no, but I'd say I mean it's really that of as we've been talking about, it's the long term thinking mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. it goes back. In the end, we're producing something, you know, and if you're going to start a brand or even if you're going to go into fashion at all, it's going to be because you're producing something. And please look at what it is that you're doing and the way that you're doing it. And if it's about building a brand over time, mm -hmm. start with the material, because in the end, it's all about the clothes. It's all about sure, the garments. Um, so as 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 a starting point, I think we have to go back to I mean, I'd love to see people in fashion be more connected with raw materials mm -hmm. and with how we actually produce the clothes because it's also something really inspiring and it's also something that creates, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very creative part of the business as well. Absolutely. My, um, I will have probably, m I have many <laughs> advices. Let <laughs> me think <laughs> which are the key so we don't go too long. I think it's it, designers, when they start to turn around the the order in which they approach their brand, because it starts at media all mm -hmm. the time now, exposure. And then, you know, maybe after that they go into design and then they go into selling. And then the last thing is production. It needs to s turn around. You need mm -hmm. to start at production and make sure that you have the foundation really solid and you can deliver and you can produce beautiful product and you figure it out that, you know, all the aspects of it and the system, all of that, right? And only then, you start talking to retailers and then, you know, this yeah, is the, the no. stages that needs to be going. You can't be doing everything for the gram, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. You have nothing. What are you promoting? And if yeah. you're promoting it and then you get a response, but you can't fulfill those orders and you can't produce them, and you can't ship. Yeah. Uh, what's the point? Yeah, right? then what? Yeah. Yeah. So it's building another way around. Um, I think it's really important that Designers understand it takes a village, so they need to bring people on board and build it as a company together with other people. Otherwise, uh, if it's all about them and their self-expression, ex self they can be artists. But building a company is mm -hmm. not an art project. And I think that is also important to understand that you are not your company and separate yourself. My best mm -hmm. advice, never call your company your name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for many reasons. First of all, I don't know if you trademarked yourself. It's probably already gone. Oh yeah. Uh, somewhere in China, someone already has your name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second, you should 
have an opportunity, and I keep telling that to everyone around me, you should have an opportunity to fail and then fail again and maybe fail 10 times and then sure. finally build a company that works because that's how all other industries work. And to connect all your self-worth to the first company you start very often at the age of 23 when you have no knowledge and you're on your own and then read review that says that it's bad and you s read I'm bad and not my company. It's really, I mean, psychologically, that's a lot of that's pressure for someone young mm -hmm. to take on, or not even young, doesn't matter. So finding that healthy distance and understand that you're creating and crafting something, mm -hmm. and it's not this thing that we were studying in college, that it needs to be all you have inside there. No, I would not give all of, you know, and then it, it allows you to build something interesting and beautiful and invite other people to that journey and, and build business mm. and I would imagine you want to be there in 20 years right absolutely yeah mm. oh yeah um, an advice yeah bring people into your work <laughs> like <laughs> bring people mm. around um, create a community mm -hmm. like a close one around you because doing it completely alone in a basement is uh, quite lonely so like bring people in mm -hmm. yeah yeah, within community, there's power. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you all so much for being here, for participating in this talk, and thank you for watching.